understand how it works. To understand how it works. To understand how it works. Live from Indianapolis, Indiana, this is the iPad Possibility Show. With your host, Tim Chat. Well, welcome to the iPad Possibilities Podcast. This is episode 40. News for the iPad. This is Tim Chan here with John Finnan. How are you doing today, John? Good, Tim. How are you? Doing great. Great. Good I've to had hear. some fun iPad uh, weirdness with jailbreaks that we'll get to a little bit later. Uh, but before we get the show off and running, I'd like to uh, thank the sponsor of this podcast, the It's On My Way application for the iPhone. And recently, they've actually had a kind of a review and uh, a spotlight on Macworld.com. And uh, it was very positive. I think it was four mice out of five or something really uh, great like that. But it's very cool to see the sponsor of this podcast being featured on one of the big, big Mac sites, uh, Macworld. So you can check that review out at macworld.com. Search for It's On My Way. And it's in the App Store now for $2.99. And, John, you know, uh, did they just review it out of uh, – did you know they were going to do that or – it was a complete surprise to me and, and I think everyone else uh, involved. Uh, so, yes, um, I know, uh, I think they were contacted some months ago. I don't know if that's what led to it or could have been this podcast for all I know that brought it to her attention. But, uh, uh, no, it was a, a very, a very nice surprise. So, yeah, that'd be cool if, uh, you know, Jason Snell watched this podcast. That, <laughs> I don't know, it's cool in all those, you know, guys that you read their stories and whatever articles and they'd be checking this show out as well. Yeah. So uh, today's all about news, uh, ways you access the news on the iPad and different services that make reading the news a better experience on the iPad kind of the whole gamut and I include Twitter along with this because I found uh, recently that I get a lot of my news from Twitter now before I get that news from local uh, or international whatever news stations such as BBC or ABC or whatever the news venue is I I get the news from Twitter more often than not these days so we talked about that uh, today and before we get to all that, uh, I wanted to cover, as we do in the live show, some stories of the weeks and things like that. And the first one was uh, kind of not really that surprising, but the iPad is popular. <laughs> the uh, second batch of international iPads has sold out. And if you order the day from the U.S. store, I've been told by people have done that. Uh, it says 7 to 10 days, but I heard June 11th by somebody that actually ordered one in the U.S. store today. So... Uh, back ordered and hard to get to the retail stores and just wildly pop uh, wild success so uh, very cool and <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm picturing 2.5 million iPads sold by the time WWDC rolls around uh, what do you think around about that prediction could very well be it's uh, it seems like it's you know a lot of people talked about overall yes a lot of big sales but it's a new thing and everybody's jumping on it but it seems to keep the wave keeps uh building and building so uh, we'll have to see how far it goes but um you know i think it's it's uh, an unmitigated success on apple's part yeah so. i agree i think it's kind of bizarre i thought it would start dying down after the first you know couple of weeks where the uh truly Apple facts would get it the first day, but no, it's continuing to sell and sell out. And I think it's even, they're having a harder time keep up with keeping up with it than they did the original iPhone. It, it would appear. Cause I remember with the original iPhone after two weeks, you could get in, walk in your local Apple store and just pick it up and buy it. Yeah. I was, uh, I was kind of in the marketplace to, uh, to get a, a three G. Um, I had, I had somebody lined up who was, uh, going to take my Wi-Fi only off my hands um, for for discount, um, but uh, I 
wasn't, I was hoping to get one out of one of the Apple stores and I kept going in and none to be had. So, uh, at this point, uh, due to, uh, another situation <laughs> with my phone, um, I'm probably going to hold off a little while on, uh, on getting the 3g, but I, I, I certainly, uh, missed it on, uh, on my most recent trip. Um, it would have been nice to have the, uh, 3g to fall back on, on the iPad cause, uh, yeah, for sure. I'm yeah. finding with the 3G iPad because the battery life's so great. I'm more often than not just bringing my iPad instead of the big the MiFi setup with all the different devices. And I've actually made I've gotten locked out of my apartment and made emergency calls with Skype on 3G using that unrestrictor app on the iPad, uh, jailbroken, and it's worked out well. I mean, the MiFi MiFi's consume a lot of battery power because it is pushing out a wireless signal, and since it's built right in it. It's a great little device for that when you don't have your phone accessible. Yeah, great. I heard about your loss of your iPhone. Are you are now going to wait for the fourth generation since you're so close here? Or are you going to? Uh, I I thought deeply about that, and uh, unfortunately, I I just it's such a, a valuable tool every day for me. Um, it was it was painful the the three days I was without it. Yeah. Um, and so um, no, I went I went ahead and, and and got another 3GS to replace it. But uh, yeah, um, about that's like you're like a month away. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, my uh, my family plan. Uh, I've got another line that opens up on my family plan in mm-hmm. in November. So uh, okay, that's not so bad. Uh, I won't, won't have to wait f- forever. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I I was I had been actively hoping to uh, to use the line that I just had to use again <laughs> for three G S. So, but yeah, um, it's it's very interesting, and um, I'm I'm certainly waiting for some of the uh, the coolness of uh, of version four. So. Uh, the OS four, so yeah, I think there'll be some huge announcements at uh, WWDC regarding the iPad and even some extra iPhone, maybe iPhone things. But I think there will be a bunch of iPad OS discussions at the keynote, and I think we we may see it a lot, especially after Google's I/O event and them just dissing on Apple. I think Apple's going to fire back with some pretty amazing things. Yeah, I, I certainly uh, I think that's a, a high probability, and and I'm certainly looking forward to it. The other story of the week is uh, people have noticed that uh, you know Google does their home pages, and uh, they did something very cool for Pac-Man with its 30th uh, anniversary. They did an interactive Pac-Man game on the Google homepage, and the very cool thing is it works on the iPad. You uh, simply use your finger left, right, up, and down to navigate the controls. And it works pretty well. There are some bugs if you go off the screen. You can't move around it also. Uh, But it works really well. It's a very cool demonstration of what HTML and JavaScript can really do on uh, the web. So I thought that was pretty cool. And if you go to google.com slash pacman, they have kept that homepage alive. Uh, for now at least. So it's off the uh, official Google page right now, but if you go to google.com slash Pacman, you can still find it. Did you get a chance to play with around with that at all? Uh, no, I, I saw some, some folks doing it, but I, I didn't uh, get a chance. I'll, I'll have to uh, uh, get on there and insert a coin myself and uh, try <laughs> it out. If you insert two coins, you get the Miss Pacman. <laughs> 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 so I, I always love Google when they do stuff like that but uh yeah i just want to mention that and uh then move on to something else which uh i guess people have known about this for a while but for some reason it just didn't click with me if you uh it's even on apple's website if you look at their power adapters for the ipad if you buy a separate power adapter it shows you it gives you that extension cord i i it didn't click until a couple days ago that uh i was listening to another podcast that your macbook pro and macbook extenders for your uh, laptops actually work with that iPad power brick. So if you're a Mac user, you can just use that same one or buy a power adapter for, from Apple for 29 bucks, And it gives you the ability to extend that cord, which is really convenient because I've had 
uh, by my bedside, that extender that I just pop in and out for my old laptop. And now I have that for my iPad sitting right next to my desk. Was that something you knew about, John? Or was it just me that was just... Out no, I, I, I did not know that at all. So, And I'm still not quite sure I understand it. So, Oh, sure. Uh, basically, the, uh, the way Apple does their laptops is um, they have this little part here, the part that actually plugs into the wall that actually comes off. And so you can separate this out. And mm -hmm. there's this right. open area here that... Uh, the MacBook and MacBook Air, MacBook Pro come with these extenders. So you basically have an extension cord to your power brick. Oh, okay. I see. I gotcha. So so you're just getting a longer cord for your power brick. Yeah, and that's I kind see. of important because I'm having a hard time finding really long uh, dock cables. I found a couple, but having that extender is really nice. It's a yeah, that's a that's a good yeah. good good point, and and sometimes it's hard to get a power brick plugged right into the wall. Yeah, um, exactly. Because they, yeah. So that was pretty cool. That's I, well, I didn't like that they changed it from uh, the iPhone power aren't power things aren't really bricks. They're just plugs that plug into the wall. And now I kind of understand why they did this. It's more of a laptop type uh, laptop style uh, power adapter. Well, and it, it certainly needs a lot more power than yeah. than the previous uh, mobile devices, so uh, it's yeah. much more like a laptop from that sense. But that's really that's really great to know, uh, particularly uh, you know anybody who's traveling. Um, I know I had to like unplug a bunch of things in the hotel room from from the wall in order to get my power brick plugged in. Yeah. So next time I'll take the cord with me, uh, or or think to use it from the uh, if I have the notebook uh, power adapter with me yeah for sure as i hinted at the beginning of this uh show that i've had some weirdness with my jailbreak uh today for, i didn't notice when this happened but it happened that uh as you'll see here i've got it set up so it shows my uh, wi-fi uh signal or uh, i guess not signal but uh carrier so i'm currently connected to the wi-fi access point of buwpa net and normally you would see a Wi-Fi bar there, right? And for some reason, it's gone totally missing. It's the most bizarre thing because I can go to Safari and load pages, even though there's nothing showing there. And when I turn on 3G, it'll uh, it'll show the 3G bar with my wireless, uh, my Wi-Fi connection shown. So it's using the Wi-Fi connection when it's doing that, but it shows the 3G when that's turned on. So it's one of the most bizarre things I've seen. I've tried to reinstall stuff and fix it, but it doesn't seem to be working. Does it have anything to do with actually that being a long name there? That no, because I've uh, used this for about a week and a half, two weeks like this, and uh, it's never happened before. It's been hmm. the same wireless network, so I have no idea what happened. <laughs> I've tried reinstalling everything. Uh, I might have to do a restore and start from scratch if I want to fix this, but I don't think I will just because it's a big hassle for this little. It's just a, more of an annoyance than anything else. Because I can yeah. tell when I'm attached to a Wi-Fi network, I just don't know how strong that network is or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, things do happen that aren't always good when you jailbreak. But there are some benefits, as I'll discuss at the end of the show with one of my picks. But... Uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that for those that, and for those that are having this issue and have found fixes, please email me because <laughs> I would love to hear how you fix this. I heard OpenSSH sometimes can do this, and I'm not exactly sure why it's doing this. Otherwise, I would have fixed it by now. But uh, yeah, let's uh, move on to kind of the main topic of today, and that is, as I said, uh, the news. Uh, how do you access the news? What are some services that make getting to the news a lot easier on the iPad. And uh, I'll, I'll start with a couple of different services that I found for the iPad and computers in general. Uh, the first is something called readability. And readability, the whole premise behind it is you're surfing the web and you wanna make things look prettier, right? Uh, easier to read and all of those great things. 
So if I go to uh, let's do a website here, let's go to uh, the unofficial Apple web block. And the way you set this up is you just go to readability, just Google it, you'll find it. And you'll find in there uh, what's just a simple, uh, basically uh, you drag and drop a bookmark onto your uh, Safari uh, or however you sync your bookmarks over. And when you do that, uh, you can set it up in multiple modes. And I've got it set up now to change the text to black and white and formatted uh, very easily so it's easier to read. You can change the font size and all of those different things. And it, it's a great uh, little service that helps you, I mean, just read the web and read the news as you're browsing. They've got different modes like newspaper mode and you can have uh, multiple different readability uh, uh, templates or droplets. So I'm not sure if, uh, have you heard about that, John, before, or is that new to you? That is new to me, and it sounds like it's uh, a really uh, neat thing to, to have. Yeah, I, I just started, I heard about it on the International Mac Podcast uh, on Saturday, I believe. And it works on the iPad really well. And uh, it works great in pairing with uh, Instapaper. I'm not sure, uh, are you an Instapaper user? I am, and Instapaper is really a marvelous thing. Yes, Definitely. I've yes. not. In, uh, Instapaper is on my other iPad, uh, <laughs> so I can't demo that here. I've got the application though. Uh, basically, what Instapaper is is it basically you have a website that you just send to Instapaper uh, because it's a better reading experience than Instapaper, and you can. Uh, read it all in one sitting where you just browse the web and check out links that you want to check out later. So you're in Twitter and you have this long story that you want to check out, but uh, you don't have time to right there. You just send it to Instapaper and it's kind of uh, your your own newspaper. So here's kind of what it looks like. Uh, it's Instapaper Pro. It's a universal app for the iPhone and iPad. And it just formats things into a very readable way as well. And the cool thing is, since this is a service, it works on multiple devices or your laptop or uh, iPhone or whatever it may be. And it links up with Twitterific on the iPad, where if you're in a website link, you can just say, send the Instapaper, and it's instantly there. Yeah, Instapaper is, is it's probably its best thing, I believe, is just its ability to you know, from wherever you are that you install a bookmark, you know, you're, you're putting stuff out there and you can read it in any of your devices and you can read it offline. Um, and that's, to me, that's just the coolest thing. You know, sometimes I, I would, you know, be on somebody else's computer or whatever and looking at some article and saying, I need to put this in Instapaper so I can really sit down and read it. Yeah, and, you know, and absorb it at some point in time in the future. Yeah, I just started uh, using it a couple days ago, and I've been really impressed with it. I wanted to see what all the hubbub was about because I've heard amazing things from other podcasters and uh, things like that. I always used Evernote to do this kind of thing where you just send web pages to your Evernote notebook, but this does it uh, so much better for what kind of things you're sending to it. Yeah, and you know the the difference I would say in my mind, because uh, I do use Evernote as well, is that Evernote to me is something that I want to save for a long time. Instapaper is something that I just want to keep for a period of time and and really absorb the article or, or whatever. So it's not mm -hmm. like I'm going to save these articles for a long time, you know, but I just wanted to more than skim it like I'm, a lot of times I'm doing on the web is just skimming things when I have a few minutes and, and then I'm using Instapaper to set those aside so I can really absorb those at some other time. Sure. Yeah. I found the same thing cause I use Evernote and I, uh, it's exactly what's for. It's for storing things. And I don't want to store all these articles that I read on a daily basis cause they'll be of no use to me in a couple of months or even weeks. Yeah. I used to, I used to send stuff to Evernote all the time and then I find that I just had, far too much stuff in Evernote that I had no reason to have there. Yeah. And uh, so Instapaper is, is uh, really for that, in my mind. 
Yeah, and it's uh, five bucks, uh, which is a one-time cost that works on your iPhone and all of your iPads as well. And yeah, it's a great little service. And uh, along with services, I think Twitter should be lumped in there. Are you, along with me, finding news items in Twitter that you would not have found in the traditional media circuits? I do. I do. Um, I wish I had more time for Twitter. Um, maybe it's because I'm involved with a, a bunch of stuff right now in, in transitioning jobs and whatnot. But, uh, it, you know, Twitter is, is certainly a great source. And I, I know several people who always get their, their headline news from Twitter uh, before they get it from any other source. So, you know, I, I say use it use it for and understand what it is. You know, it's not like um, vetted um, factual things, but uh, it certainly is a very quick uh, source to uh, let you know that something is happening and, and you can explore and get more facts about that elsewhere. Yeah, I follow a number of local um, stations and kind of city uh, tweeters that kind of cover stuff that's going on in Indianapolis. And I also find about about the big things like the volcano went off. I I actually did not hear about that in traditional media. I heard that about that on Twitter, and you know the lost finale. I've been <laughs> hearing a bunch on Twitter. So all kinds of news I, I'm finding that I run across. And Twitterific is my preferred Twitter client for iPad. I, I have Twitterlater as well, but I think this one's the best one as far as just consuming tweets. Yeah, I, I use Twitter later as well, and it's a uh, it's a great uh, great app. So. Very cool. I'm excited to see what the official Twitter app does for the iPad. Cause I think they'll have one pretty soon here, but uh, not right away. Well, uh, from there, I want to move on just to from services. As uh, there are a great number of services, I think those are the big ones as far as. Uh, getting the news onto your iPad or making websites easier to read to different applications. Do you have one that you'd like to talk about, John? Yeah, let me. Uh, BBC News, I think, is is one that I I really appreciate. I I I like to see kind of a non-US perspective. Sure. And I, you know, I, I'll look at. <clears throat> excuse me. I'll I'll, uh, I'll use uh, USA Today quite a bit to see what's what's happening, but. Um, I, t- I like to jump into BBC uh, News as well, um, and it's a good, you know, free app uh, to to get some of that. What about you for newspapers, Tim? What do you typically well, look at? I, I found myself opening up US Today, USA Today more and more uh, than any other news app out there, and I find it's just a great uh, little app that uh, consolidates all of USA Today. It's got USA Today money. Uh, USA Today uh, sports and life and just the traditional page and I just find every morning I just open it up it tells me the weather built right into there and it, I just find it a great little application to uh, use for my morning news and uh, another one uh, which I find uh, it's not exactly news but uh, I'll lump it in here but it's called This Day and I find myself opening this app on a daily basis to just see what happened uh, this day back many years ago. So uh, today, uh, South Carolina became the eighth state in 1788. And a couple other things happened. Uh, There's a Swedish botanist, uh, Carolos, I don't know how to say it, last name, was born. <laughs> and then John Barden, uh, American physicist and the first person to win the Nobel Peace Prize twice in the same field, was born today. In 1908, so I find myself opening that app this uh, this day to just get what happened this day in history. So that's I, I, app. I use that one fairly frequently myself. I, I, I find that that to be a, a fun educational little app. Yeah, for sure. And as far as I think, uh, as far as websites that do iPad news really well. I think CNN is by far the most aggressive as far as giving iPad users a good experience on the web. They've gone through the trouble of making all of their videos HTML5. So they'll play right in here, and it, they play really well. Uh, it was kind of funny. Leo Laporte was uh, 
demonstrating the Nexus One and uh, it's or uh, I guess the Froyo update or whatever he was showcasing the Flash stuff, and I guess he was unaware that uh, CNN has an HTML5 version of their site. And I'm not sure if uh, it changes to HTML5 for you know Android devices, but it CNN definitely plays really well with the iPad and formats everything really nicely. Have you found any uh, kind of new sites that have redesigned their sites for the iPad really well? or You know, I, I know there's a number of them uh, that have redesigned, but since, you know, I, I tend not, I have never tended to go to new sites very often with my iPhone. Sure. So it was, you know, typically just the computer and, uh, now it's now going with the iPad. I, I don't always know that that they've just redesigned it for the iPad. You know, as long as it works for the iPad, I'm I'm, I'm happy. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think most most of the new site seems to be really getting on that bandwagon. Yeah, for sure. What other apps have you found that you just come to day in and day out for your latest news while you're on the iPad? You know, I, I for a while tried uh, New York Times Editor's Choice, um, which is the free one. I, 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 I'm kind of feeling that that's kind of uh, uh, limited in in what I find there, so I'm not I'm not really utilizing that a lot. Um, and I'm really looking for more uh, news apps, so I. Other than BBC and, and USA Today, uh, those tend to be the two mainstays for me. Um, okay. I, I really wasn't a, a big news hound, at least on the computer, um, prior to getting the iPad. And now I, I find that I am looking for news on a daily basis that I never did before. And so that's kind of a, a new thing for me. Yeah, I'm the same way. I did not read newspapers at all it was not something i did i did not seek out uh news sites at all because and the same thing with books it was kind of bizarre i did not read i didn't read books really that much i used to but i kind of fell away from that and i i find even reading books uh, with ibooks is a much more it's a better experience than i had with the paper books for whatever reason and it's bizarre i'm finding myself reading news sites news apps and uh it's just a great experience. It's something kind of unusual. I didn't think the iPad would do that. I think I thought I'd be using it to play games, to watch movies, but reading, I, I didn't really think that would happen to me, but it did. Yeah, there there is one um, news related app which I wanted to mention, and I think it's called the Guardian. It's called Eyewitness, and it's 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 from I guess the the the. Uh, the Guardian Eyewitness, um, and I'm trying to recall the where the Guardian is as a newspaper, but um, I'm, it's my memory is failing me. But yeah, it's it's real interesting in that um, this newspaper is known for publishing interesting photos, uh, newsworthy photos of different subjects, and the Guardian Eyewitness, or I guess you can look it up as as for under the Guardian or the Guardian Eyewitness, um, it, it provides these these photos to the iPad, and uh, it's it's really kind of uh, a great way of, of visually going in and, and seeing some some interesting, uh, you know, news topics photo-wise uh, for anybody who's, you know, either into photography or just into news journalism. Um so it's a kind of a, a cool way of, of looking at yeah, all these different I used things. To have, uh, I used to have this app installed. I've been running into a problem I didn't think I'd run into where uh, I don't have enough room for all the apps I need because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I've just started and uh, held the first episode up Wednesday. I finished editing and everything, but I'm starting a huge music segment of iPad apps. So currently... <laughs> I have over three pages worth of music applications that I'm oh, wow. to <laughs> So I've been running out of room. So I'm really looking forward, forward to the 4.0 update where I get folders because 
I've got 22 different instruments that I'll be reviewing on Wednesday, and I have uh, all sorts of other music apps as far as education and stuff, but I've had to slim down the other apps, and The Guardian went with those. <laughs> yeah, so, um, well, anyway, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good thing to get, and uh, as long as you don't have your iPad filled with music apps, <laughs> I, I recommend getting it. Um, and I guess, it's a, I guess The Guardian is a, is a U.K., uh, newspaper and uh, so anyway it's, it's a, uh, the website's guardian.co.uk but it's a, a very cool thing one app I discovered the day is called simply newspaper and uh, basically their goal here is to bring all of the different uh, newspapers accessible through websites to your iPad uh, so you've got all the different states here. Indiana's in here. Uh, Illinois, basically all 50 states. Uh, let's go to Hawaii. And let's go to the Helicala Times. And basically the goal here is it brings all these different news sources. And it basically just gives you the website of that newspaper. But I, I still find it an incredibly valuable app just because it does give you all those different websites all those different newspapers on your iPad. Uh, but if you're willing to seek those web page, uh, those web pages out, it's basically just a wrapper for those web pages. So, uh, I guess, uh, there's not a whole lot of value except for the fact that it consolidates everything. Yeah, that is kind of a, a, a cool approach. I think it's probably a little overpriced. I see it being five ninety nine. Yeah, it was a very expensive for what it did. The guys, and it's one of the top uh, grossing or top twenty five in the in the news section. So, uh, yeah, very easy to make app. I would imagine. Yeah, it's it's probably uh, not wasn't a hugely difficult uh, programming task, but it, it's certainly a good idea. Um. And so, well, hats off to them. Yeah, good job for making. Uh, I mean, it's a great app, but I mean, very simple. Uh, I mean, yeah, great. Moving on to another app that I, I really appreciate. It's called it's the NPR app, right? And uh, the cool thing about NPR is they do their stories both text and they have audio of that same story, so you're able to listen uh, to that, and it'll pull up. Uh, their audio player of that app. It's loading, I guess, right now. But uh, I appreciate NPR's uh, approach where, I mean, they give you the audio as well as the text, and it's a very visual uh, kind of way of doing that, and it uh, looks very nice. And you can see you're able to scroll through the text as well as uh, listen to the audio at the same exact time. Uh, so I think NPR is another great app out there that uh, people should check out as well. Have you played around with this one at all? Um, I do have that on the iPad, and I, I've played around with it a few times. Uh, can't say that I've done a lot with it, but uh, that's nothing against it as an app. Uh, just more my my time priorities. Yeah, uh, but, I found yeah. myself not yeah having time to go through all these different news apps. But I thought we should just kind of do a big overall cover of the apps that are out there because different people are interested in different things, obviously. Right. There, there, here's another one that uh, I, don't, I don't have personal experience from, but I've, I've heard a lot of excellent uh, uh, comments and reviews about this. It's if you're someone who gets, gets your news through RSS feeds and, and that type of thing, uh, as well as Twitter and blogs and, and different things, the early edition. I've heard great things about this one as well. Uh, Chris, who's on the show a couple of weeks ago, actually uh, uses that a lot and loves it as well. Yeah, I've been I've been thinking of uh, of buying this because it's it's really the answer to what I've been wanting in s some way in electronic form for years now. In fact, I remember in the early days of the internet, actually talking with some folks about how you really needed to how how to put together a a real news site. In you know, on a web page, and it would be a you know a custom site that that listed stuff, and we've done that with RSS feeds. You know, that's how the internet evolved. Was RSS feeds allow you to pull in things of interest into 
a central location, but they've never, at least to my experience, have never really presented them in anything close to being like a newspaper format. Sure. And and that's what the early editions seems to do is is really present it in in that kind of uh, you know skim through it to find the ones that you really want to delve into just like you would be flipping pages of a newspaper. And I think it's, it's uh, probably certainly something that we'll, a lot of people will, will go to if they have that to go to on the iPad, you know, to replace the newspaper. I, I, I see that being a compelling thing for a lot of folks. Yeah, I do as well. I've, I've not played around with that yet. I want to, but I'm, Having a hard time spending all this money on apps. I, it's it's nice because I've been able to get uh, a lot of review copies, as especially with the music apps. I've gotten a bunch of different review copies for the podcast. So I've been able to play around with some expensive apps that I didn't have to pay for because of this. But uh, yeah, I'm, I've spent probably over a hundred dollars in apps already. <laughs> I gotta watch out what I spend my money on. It's uh, it can be dangerous. <laughs> yeah, definitely can. Uh, you mentioned RSS. I wanted to touch on. Uh, one of the RSS reader that I have, and the only reason I have it is because it came, uh, is because I actually owned it already for the iPhone. But uh, it's a very well designed app. It's uh, it's universal, which is great because it works both on your iPhone and iPad. And uh, I mean, it's just a very simple RSS reader. Things look pretty in it, and uh, it's got. Uh, as we all love Instapaper, it's got export options to send things to Instapaper if you want to read it later. Uh, you can send it Delicious and all sorts of other clients. You can Twitter it out, to email it to your Evernote notebook. Uh, so it's a great little app. Uh, I think it's five bucks or something like that. I forget the exact price of it. Do you have any? Uh, so that's that's my favorite RSS reader just because that's the only one I've used, uh, quite frankly. I forgot to mention the name when recording this podcast. The name of that application is called News Rack. So I bring you back to the show. Uh, and I, I found myself not using RSS as much. I'm using Twitter more for the stuff I found in feeds earlier and things like that. Are you a big RSS user, John? You know, I'm not. Uh, I, I use a couple of clients, uh, none of which I come to mind right now, but I, I'm, I'm not a, a big RSS fan, and, and I'm hoping something like uh, the early edition would, would kind of pull those together for me and uh, and make those more usable. Sure. Um, what, I, what I might mention is, um, and I, I'm sure that these exist all over the place, but, um, you know, your local news station uh, one of our local news stations here in Phoenix, um, uh, Three TV, mm-hmm. uh, has their own little app that uh, you know allows you to look at the news and weather and sports and you know all those kinds of things. And so, uh, I would certainly recommend people look look for something in their from their local area. Very cool. I, I've tried that with Indianapolis, and all I come up with are iPhone apps. That's cool that those are there. Well, there's no. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and you know this, I think is it hasn't been optimized for the iPad, but okay. it, but it works fairly well on the iPad. So okay, uh, very cool. It's uh, you know something that I think more people use it, the more they'll be encouraged to 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 make them good iPad apps. Yeah, I have a feeling in the future local stations will be hiring developers to reach out to all these other platforms, Android, iPad, and all the other mobile devices out there. I think there's a huge market for it. I think every news station should hire at least one developer to help them get there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any other, any other thoughts on news before the, we move on? Yeah. The, the last one I, I, I'll mention is uh, the Associated Press news app. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, um, it's a pretty good news app. It's, it's, it kind of uses an interesting, little kind of like a timeline metaphor um although it's not quite a timeline but it kind of makes me think of a timeline i'm not sure what you would call it um and it's it's pretty good although you know it's it's straight from associated press so they're typically um they associated press stories have a different flavor than you know a usa today or 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 something else like that but sure um 
you know, it's a, it's a free app and it's, it's worth looking at because if, if you like it, you'll like it. And if, uh, if you don't, uh, it doesn't hurt probably to keep it on and keep it on your iPad and, uh, and use it sometime when you don't find the right, you know, right story on, uh, something else associated press might have it before anybody else does. If you're, uh, you know, if you get one of those, those Twitter tweets that say, uh, you know, the, uh, the sky is falling, uh, said chicken little and you, yeah. <laughs> you need to find out some facts about it. Yeah. I think I, on my iPhone, I used a- AP associated press with the, their head, they did some push, uh, stories that they did and all that. Mm-hmm. Very cool. I thought it'd be a fun discussion to have on different news things because I, I know that's one thing that I've been really using my iPad a lot for is simply discuss uh, finding the news and enjoying the news and <laughs> just reading in general. So I thought it'd be a great discussion to have, and I was glad to have uh, you here for because I don't I don't like doing these kind of topics with just myself. It can get quite boring, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy, happy to do it. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think for me anyway, the iPad has really um, allowed me to, as I kind of mentioned before, be more up on the news. Uh, it used to be that a lot of times in the past I would, uh, you know, I'd be the, like the last person <laughs> in, my, in my circle to know something off the news because I'd be, you know, didn't, didn't catch the news at night or whatever and uh, uh, f- f- was foolish to listen to the podcast in the car instead of the <laughs> radio so yeah. I'd be the last person to uh, to hear some things uh, often and now with the iPad I, I, I tend to be a little bit more current in my news so yeah I'm the same way I, I listen to podcasts I have not listened to the radio in many years actually <laughs> unless it's playing in the background from someone else playing it so yeah, I'm the same way. I'm the last person to know until until just recently. So uh, from from the news, I want to start a new section of I want to check if anyone's reading iBooks. Are, are you reading much on the iPad these days? You know, I am I'm reading quite a bit, um, but I'm actually reading some um, some books that I've converted into EPUB myself. Oh, um, very cool. So, uh, you know, I had a series of, of uh, e-books that, uh, that I was able to convert into, into uh, EPUB, and, and it's, a, it's one of those things that I never got around to reading, and so now I'm finally reading it. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pretty thrilled with, with the iBooks application. Um, what, I, what I intend to do as soon as I finish this series is... I'm probably going to spend a little more time with the Kindle application mm-hmm. and and really look at uh, at what's available through there. Um, uh, the i iBooks bookstore um, has a number of things, but um, not necessarily everything I want. But I do have a actually a number of samples that I've I've downloaded from from the iBooks bookstore that are kind of like waiting for me to turn around and actually buy the, uh, buy the book. Yeah. I, I've tried the steer clear of Kindle, uh, just because I, once I purchase, I don't want my library spread, spread across two different DRM systems. And I know I'll stay with Apple for some time, uh, probably forever. And I, I know Kindle has got a better selection, but I, I just find myself having a hard time doing that. I've, I've, as you, a converted uh, book I already had in PDF form. I actually, it's a book that was falling apart because I read it so much. Uh, mm-hmm. the, bi- the Literally, the uh, binding was out of it. So I actually scanned it in the PDF and then took the time to uh, convert it over to EPUB. And it's great to have it on there in iBooks. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's one of my favorite books that I read a bunch, you know. Right. And uh, so I've done that as well. I've got, you know... Uh, made my own cover and it looks better than some of the covers you get in the, <laughs> the bookstore. <laughs> and oh, I, yeah, yeah. I, I am, uh, the book I'm reading is I've, I've mentioned, uh, I think I mentioned before is the Lord of the Rings. I've made it through, um, the fellowship, of the ring, uh, basically for 15 bucks, you get all three books and I've made it uh, to chapter three of the two towers. So I've read, 
a thousand pages already in the if you go to the vertical mode which is the mode i like to read books and i can't stand uh i, I was gonna ask you i was gonna ask you that and, and i i find myself uh in uh, portrait mode as well um it seems a more natural way to to read for me yeah it feels like a big hardback book when you do it that way especially with the ipad case i leave it uh with that bind and it feels mm-hmm. like i have a real book in my hand that way and it the landscape mode i just i'm i like i don't know it just feels weird because you have to change what page you're looking at more often and yeah yeah no the interesting thing is that uh you know, I've, I've been reading this one book, both through iBooks on the iPad, as well as through Stanza on the iPhone. Okay. And so, uh, obviously, there's a vast difference in how things are formatted between <laughs> yeah. the two. And the page so, numbers would be different. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's that's kind of a challenge. And I'm, I'm hoping that iBooks, when it comes out with OS 4 on, on the next version of the iPhone will actually do some kind of syncing like the Kindle does because uh, that's what they, uh, they mentioned they'd do that or something. Oh, did they? Okay. All right. Well, that's, that's cool because uh, I could really use that, but uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite the task to kind of catch up on the iPhone. It's like, uh, okay, how many pages do I need (laughs) to jump ahead here to uh, catch up to where I was? Yeah. During the, OS 4 event, uh, Steve mentioned that they do wireless syncing, so you're in the same place with your iPhone and your iPad. And uh, I've noticed that uh, sync system is not in place currently, so they'll have to update it. I'm referring to if you're trying to sync uh, two iPads wirelessly, it does not do that yet. Mm-hmm. And there is no, uh, even for the beta testers, I do not believe there is an iBook app yet. So that's not a part of the firmware, which is interesting. And, and uh, another thing with iBooks I want to mention is uh, something that's been really bothering me is uh, when you reach the uh, end of the book, it still looks like uh, you've got more pages to go. I, I, I really hope they update that. So it, you have the last page and it goes to the end binding or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah I can, it, it's a, it is a small thing, but yeah, it is a, I, I actually saw somebody else on the, internet who, who commented on that and uh, from a design perspective that's probably the, not the right thing to do but uh, yeah actually i emailed steve jobs and asked him about that because i didn't think it was a very apple thing to do i've, I've <laughs> not heard back about that <laughs> i thought steve would i thought steve would be a guy that would like he uh, likes design and likes everything to be realistic and i thought he would uh, appreciate that <laughs> I'm not sure if he realized that or not. Before we move away from iBooks, I wanted to mention something that in the store, uh, something I didn't notice before is there's a purchases tab. So uh, if you own a different uh, multiple iPads or if you have to re um, install the firmware for whatever reason, you can go to the purchases tab and re download books that you already own. And this is a very cool thing because even with apps in the App Store, you can re download the apps that you already own. But you have to remember that long list of apps. But with books, they keep that list for you so you can re-download the books whenever you need to. And I hope they add this to the App Store sooner or later where they have this purchases tab where you can just go and look at all the apps you own and re-download them. Yeah, you know, you, you kind of have a purchased uh, a purchase thing in iTunes for things you've purchased. Right, yeah. I don't know why they don't have that for apps. Other than just going to the apps in your iTunes will show you all the apps you have. Yeah, for sure. As long as you sync them without before you delete them if you didn't like the app for whatever reason. Yeah. So, yeah, very cool. I'm, I'm kind of interested to see what people are reading in iBooks because, as you mentioned, the selection isn't that great. So that's why I started with the classic The Lord of the Rings. And I've got some other ones that I'm excited to read after I'm finished with that one. But... Uh, or the ring should take me a while. I've got 2,000 more pages to go. <laughs> well, and I'm a, I'm a science fiction fan, uh, and so uh, there's several places out on the web that you can go and find, uh, you know, royalty-free um, older science fiction stories, uh, some classics and whatnot yeah. that, that you can get and get an EPUB format. And so I've, I've gotten, you know, a handful of those that I've uh, brought in through iTunes. Yeah, I've noticed how uh, 
the Harry Potter books, for whatever reason, they're on Kindle. They're not on the iBook store. I, I don't think J.K. Rowling likes eBooks for whatever reason. I think she has something against them. <laughs> yeah, it's it's new for a lot of folks. That's for sure. Yeah, so it'll be good when there's more selection, but uh, it's good with what we have now. Uh, from there, I want to move on to kind of the picks of the week. Uh, do you have any apps that you've been really uh, having fun with lately? Um, well, there's uh, one I wanted to mention, and that was uh, the uh, World Atlas from National Geographic. I'm finding that that to be a – I'm, I'm a big kind of a – a maps fan. I'm, mm-hmm. I've been trained as a cart- cartographer in uh, oh, wow. my, my past. And so I'm, I'm big on maps and, um, this is a great, great app from, from national geographic. Uh, you can, you can zoom in, on you know, like any Atlas, you can zoom in, um, in different things. And then at, at one point in time, um, when you zoom in far enough, they go out to the internet and start to uh, bring in uh, more information from internet sources to get get you down. Uh, I think with Google's help, you can even potentially get down to street level. Oh wow, that is really cool. So I can't uh, it on the App Store right now, it looks great. I mean, yeah. So it's it's a it's a great little app for anybody who you know has interest in in maps or in you know political or geographic kind of boundaries or placements um i find it a great little tool to uh you know to just kind of look up a place like if you're reading a book say and you're like what well, you know i vaguely know where that place is but i don't don't know what they're really talking about yeah um, there's this, this book that I'm reading right now, which takes place in uh, in Oregon, and uh, I've never been to Oregon, but uh, you know they they start talking about a bit of the geography of Oregon, and so you know I can kind of jump in here and see the relationships of the cities, and if I go in far enough, I can I can get uh, you know much more detailed maps and, and see what they're really talking about. Very cool. As a part of the music uh, series, I had a chance to review a lot of apps that I uh, didn't even know were out there. And one of those apps that really caught my eye, and I'll be talking about this on the Wednesday show, is called Voice Keyboard HD. And I've got a beta version. It's the next update that's being released in a a week or so. It's uh, just waiting on Apple's approval. But the premise behind this app is um, a lot of people have seen Cat Piano, right? where you have that cat uh, or multiple cats and it plays in that octave and you make chords out of the cat sounds or whatever. This app gives you the ability to create whatever kind of piano you want. So you just simply press record here and I've got uh, with me a uh, saxophone, uh, just a neck and mouthpiece here that I'm gonna use to record a sound with. And you just hit record. Hit stop. And the hit stop will probably be in the sound sample. But as And then it just loads that sample to about, it looks like uh, two and a half octaves here. And let me turn the volume on. Hit stop. So as you can hear, uh, basically what it does is it just samples that sound, and you can do any sound you want. Very cool. And so it, it's just a it's a brilliant app because there's all sorts of keyboard apps out there, but this one gets to be anything you want to be. Sorry, I cut you off there. No, no. Uh, so it's it's just like your your MIDI keyboard that has a sampling capability where you can sample any sound and, and play it back. Yeah, and I mean the cool thing, I mean. It makes it so it's uh, it goes through the whole octave, you know, chromatic, all that. And you're actually able to edit the waveform to play in reverse, and you can save the different samples. And it comes pre-installed with uh, some voice in their voice library, some different instruments and uh, things like that. But uh, it's 
I think it'd be a lot of fun for uh, if you have young children. I think they'd have a blast just you know making sounds and hearing it back at different pitches. And uh, I think it's just a very cool demonstration of what you can do uh, with the iPad. Yeah, very cool. Totally using the capabilities of the iPad. Yeah, so uh, that I'll talk about more of that on that app on Wednesday, Thursday show. It's it's one that just really caught my eye as something that's wow. This is uh, so much fun, so useful. Uh, just a very cool app. And uh, let's see, the price I think is around three dollars. Uh, they have a iPhone version as well. I'm not sure what the differences are between them. I know uh, the HD one is optimized for the iPad. Uh, let's see. I had another pick, and uh, I, I talked about this earlier, but Instapaper, Instapaper Pro is a very cool app that I would recommend getting if you're an Instapaper user, of course. And then uh, the final app, I didn't want to talk a whole lot about Instapaper Pro since we already did a big uh, segment on that. But uh, if you're a jailbreaker out there, uh, there's a very cool app that uh, it's called uh, Browser Changer. And what this app does, as it sounds, is it changes the browser that links open it. So you just go to your settings app and you change it from Atomic to Atomic Lite, iCab Mobile, Opera Mini, your perfect browser. And I've got it set now to Atomic and it works with uh, basically the, the springboard pull down here. So I can turn it on or off as I'm doing, turning it on right now. And when you do that, uh, if you open up any, uh, any link that is sent to you, so let me go to, uh, link here out of your just built-in mail client and let me see here okay here we go I'm at the Newton talk mailing list here and they've got a web address here and it pulls it up in uh, atomic web so that's a very cool app that you can just turn on and off as need and changes the ability to change your default browser. And that's kind of the one thing that's holding Safari above the other ones as far as it being used so often. Very cool. So uh, that's only available though at one of jailbroken? Yes, that's, that's one of the, another reason to jailbreak, right? <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. So uh, do you have any other picks or apps you want to talk about before we uh, kind of wrap up the show here? Yeah, let me just mention one and that it, it, it's kind of, news related um and kind of one of those good citizen things and that's called my congress and uh my congress is a is a way of getting in touch with your government as they say so you can um find out who your your congressmen are who your senators are and uh find out some information about them and uh you can contact them uh, i think it starts an email here if i'm not mistaken um it, well, this it goes to a, a in this case it goes to a web form um, to to uh, contact that that congressperson um, and you know it, it gives you some information. So if, you know if you hear things about one of your congressmen doing stupid things, uh, here's where you can go and find out what everybody's saying about about him or her, um, and. Uh, Get, and get some good information about the uh, person. So with the, uh, you know, we got elections coming up in, in November for some of these folks. So uh, it's a, probably a good way to uh, get an idea of who you should, yeah, who you should vote for or who you shouldn't. So Yeah, don't blindly vote for whoever your friends vote for. Right. Uh, while I was uh, trying to find that app, I found kind of a, I didn't think the app store could do this, but uh, I'm seeing red. And when you're searching, so evidently the titles in the app store, they can have part of their text be read. Have you known about this or do you I know have, how to do this? I have no idea. I've never seen that. But guess my age, question mark, math magic has part of their title in red, which kind of catches your eye as it just did mine. <laughs> so I'm not sure how they're doing this, but uh, very cool. And if you're an app developer, uh, I hope you guys don't start exploiting this all over the place and just having red titles for the heck of it. But it certainly catches your eye and is uh, kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to figure out how they did that. Yeah, I I'm sure as people, I mean, people will probably see that. And I mean, as I just did, clicked on it because it's like, wow, it's red. <laughs> but, uh, very cool. Uh, before we leave you today, I want to announce uh, 
that we've got some giveaways, some app giveaways. I've got some promo codes that uh, are available to you guys as listeners. And uh, this is kind of in prelude of the music series I'm doing. I've, uh, we've got Accordio Pro and Piano Accordio Pro. Uh, these are accordion emulators available for the iPad. Uh, Accordio Pro is $6 and Piano Accordio Pro is $4. I've got two copies of each free to give away. So how you go about doing that is simply email me at ipadpossibilities at gmail.com. Subject line either uh, one or the other, not both. Accordio Pro or Piano Accordio Pro and then promo after that. Just email me that at the subject line and if, I, if I've got them left, I will email you a promo code. So those are available and I'll have more, a bunch more promo codes on, Wednesday, on the Wednesday, Thursday show uh, available. And that's uh, another great reason to become a part of the uh, premium show and also the app, the app itself, because uh, you get the shows a day earlier. So you'll know about these promo codes before anybody else. And a great benefit of being a premium member is I actually have an email listserv that once I get these promo codes, actually before the app people get uh, knowledge of these, I send that out and you just reply back which app you want in. So if you're on the premium podcast, that's a benefit of that. It's $2 a month, and as you get these free apps, hopefully they'll pay for itself uh, again and again. So uh, if you want to find out more information about the premium podcast, just go to thepossibilitiesnetwork.com, and you'll find out all the information you need there. It's just $2 a month, and as I said, it'll kind of pay for itself as you get all these free apps from being the first to uh, know about it. So uh, those two are available. Just email me if you want them. And... uh, why don't uh, John just let people know where people can find you at? Yeah, um, you can look for John Finnan on Twitter, and I haven't been too uh, active there uh, lately, but uh, I'm hopefully going to start that up again, and uh, that's probably the best place right now. Very cool. And uh, with that said, uh, f- uh, feedback is always welcome. You can do that in one of two ways. Uh, first off, just iPad possibilities at gmail.com. And you can call in at 209-542-IPAD. And all feedback's welcomed and appreciated. And uh, if you want to find out some more information about this show, you can just go to thepossibilitiesnetwork.com. And that's where you'll find this uh, show and many other shows, as well as the information about the premium podcast. And if you'd like to support the show, you can do that in one of a few different ways. As I mentioned before, the premium podcast and the app available in the App Store for $2.99 are both available. As a part of the premium podcast, you'll get the shows Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You'll get uh, let you know of all these promotions and free apps ahead of anybody else. And you'll get ad-free versions of the podcast. So part of that 2 bucks a month, you get no ads in the podcast. So a lot of other great things. Just check those out at thepossiblesnetwork.com. So uh, with all that said, uh, until the Wednesday show, Wednesday, Thursday show, with the music instruments and all that greatness, uh, this is Tim Chatton and John Finnan with iPad Possibilities. We will talk to you uh, in the next episode.